Um, welcome to the uh, review today, Bible study review um, for our Join Us to Read the Bible Challenge. And we started off with the book of Acts and we are going to continue um, you know, reading the book of Acts for a few more weeks and then round up and go into another book. So if there's anyone who's watching, let me know in the comments that you're here and say hello so i know that it's somebody i see that there are two people or so already in here or more just say hello so we know you're here hello there how are you doing hi let's know you're here say hello there awesome we're going to be doing a review and then we're going to spend a bit of time to pray first and then we'll get into our review hi dami how are you doing today we're gonna do i'm um, just gonna pray first and then we get into the review and i'm just gonna thank god for a new month uh, basically and then just pray over the month of march um as we already don't we've done like a week almost a week already and it is amazing how god how faithful god has been to us hello ladies hi blessing hi good to see you in here hello 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 welcome come on in we're just going to spend time worshiping God and just praying, giving praise. Just thank him. Thank him for, for the grace that he has given to you to be able to see this new month of March. Um, you know, it's already, we're already five days into the month and God has been faithful. He's kept you, protected you from the beginning of this year till now. He's watched over you. He's been faithful. He's a good, 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 good father. Just bless his holy name. We say you are faithful. We say you are a faithful God. You are an awesome father. We bless your name. We adore you. We just say you are faithful. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be adored. We just say thank you, mighty God. Thank you for providing for our, for our every need. Thank you for being our father. Thank you because you are our present help in times of need. We thank you because you are a healer. You are our provider. You are our righteousness. We just say thank you. You continually uphold and strengthen us. We bless your name. We give you praise. We say thank you, mighty God. Thank you, I am that I am. We thank you, mighty Father. We worship you. We adore you. Maleko se prede de bo satala da ba she teli andaba. Meke se tele de bro do bo se tele keria. Mele bro do soto le de 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 bo shanta ko se telia. Le bre do se tele ko se te malada ba. We will bless your holy name, O oh God. We worship you, Jesus. You are faithful. There is none like you. You are awesome, God. We say you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be glorified. Oh, there is none like you, our Father. We bless your name. We worship you. We adore you. We adore you, we adore you, we adore you. Oh, blessed be your holy name, Jehovah. Le ko se predi araba, mele reba se tele keruba se telia, mele bredu za talaraba. We just say thank you. Our hearts bless your name. We thank you for all of our sisters here in this community. We thank you, O oh God, for how far you have kept it. We thank you for strengthening and watching over them. We thank you for the tough moments in their lives because you are there with them, carrying them through. We thank you, O oh God, for the for the challenges that they that they are currently facing. We thank you, God, because you are with them. Even in the midst of the storm, you are we are with us, O oh God. You continually show yourself strong on our behalf. We say thank you, mighty God. We bless your holy name. We adore you. We give you praise. We worship you. We just say thank you. Thank you, awesome Father. We give you glory. We worship you. We adore your holy name. Thank you, God, because you are our succor. You are our strength. You are our comfort. We thank you because you are our present help in times of need. You are always with us. You are always with us. You carry us on the wings of the spirit. Always you carry us. And so we bless you. We say thank you, mighty God. Thank you, I am that I am. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want you to pray for yourself and say, I am strengthened by the Lord. I'm strengthened by the Lord. 
There is nothing that will happen to me that will take my joy away. God strengthens me. I receive the strength of the Lord. In every area of my life, I receive God's strength. In the name of Jesus Christ, I receive God's strength. I receive God's strength, God's wisdom. I receive God's strength. I'm not overwhelmed, but I'm strengthened with, with power from the inside of me. In the name of Jesus, I am strengthened for my divine assignment. I'm strengthened for my everyday living. I'm strengthened for all of my roles. I'm strengthened for all the mighty things that you that you, you are prepared for me, for my role as, as, as your daughter, as a child to my own parents, as a wife, as a mother, as a leader of your people. I am strengthened for everything, every role that the Lord has put in my, in my hands to do. I receive the strength of the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. I am empowered by the hand of the Lord himself. I, I am not tired. I am not weary. I do not give up. Because God's strength is made available unto me. In the name of Jesus Christ. If there is any area of my heart where right now I am feeling stressed. I declare that I receive the strength of the Almighty. The Bible says that the one that strengthens us. And so we, we tap into that strength from now. We take on the strength of the Almighty. We declare in the name of Jesus Christ that we, we take on the strength of the Almighty. That no matter what happens we, around us, we are not dismayed. We are not dismayed. In the name of Jesus Christ, because the Lord strengthens us, we receive his grace. In every area of our lives, we receive his grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, awesome Father. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to pray concerning this month of March that every desire of the Lord for you will come to pass. Every desire of the Lord for you will come to pass. In this month of March, every desire of the Lord for me will come to pass. To pass. In the name of Jesus Christ. We declare in the name of Jesus Christ that every desire of God for me in this month of March will come to pass. I will not leave anything undone. I will, not, I will become all that God wants me to become. I will not shy away from God's plans and purpose for my life. Every single desire of the Lord for me will come to pass in my life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that the Lord has, has marked for me to step into in this month, none will elude me. None of them will elude me. In the name of Jesus Christ, I step into the strength of the Lord and I, and I walk according to the purpose of God for my life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, mighty God. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. I mean, I want you to pray for yourself right now that as, as we study God's word, as we take a look at what we have learned over this last week, that the Lord himself will help you to, your heart will be open to receive God's word. As you learn from your other sisters, as we all share together, that the Lord himself will open up your heart to receive from him and that only his counsel for you will stand in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that we are going to share together today, you will learn, you will grow through them. Your heart will be better through them. Your life will increase in abundance through them. The Lord himself will perfect everything that concerns you through them. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All right, so let's get into um, the review of the book of Acts. For those who don't know, my name is Olusha Ashru, and I'm the founder of Mothers Arising. Um, it's a global community of moms where we are sharing together the love of God and where God is helping us to become more and more like Jesus. We know every role. God is strengthening us. He's empowering us, you know, to look at all of our roles and do them. Execute flawlessly as a wife, as a mom, as a career woman, as a business owner, you know, as a child of God. Every area of your life, as a friend, everything you know god is helping us to be able to 
to, to step into the fullness of what he has for us in every area of our lives. So let's look at what we're going to be doing um, for our, our Bible reading challenge. If you've been a part of it from the beginning, it's just a an avenue for us to be reading the Bible together because we understand that sometimes it's tough when you have to do it by yourself. Like there's nobody holding you accountable, you can drop off. But if you have your sisters sharing with you, um, you know, you know that there's, there are people that are also reading along with you. You have a schedule you're following. It makes it easier for you to be able to step into all that God has for you in terms of being able to study the Bible well and grow through your knowledge of God's word. So we started with the book of Acts on Monday, 1st of March. And we're going to be doing um, this, this challenge, this Bible reading time together every single day. We read two times a day and then we do a review, a live review at the end of the week so that we can all share our lessons together. All right. And that's why we're here today to do the first review that we're having on the book of Acts. And um, this week we read um, two chapters of the book of Acts every single day. So it means that for five days we read 10 chapters of the book of Acts. So we're going to do a review of Acts chapter 1 to 10 today. All right. So let's get into it today. So who has been reading consistently? Let me hear from you in the charts. I'm reading consistently. Um, you know, I want to see it in, in the comments. I've been reading, I read, one, I read one, I didn't finish the other one. I just want to hear from you. What has your experience been like in your reading? And um, have you been able to read all 10 so far this week? I want to hear from you. I've been reading, I haven't been reading. I just started reading with you. How's it been for you? What's been happening? about the Bible study review. Like, that's what we're doing today. We are, I'm, not, I'm not telling you anything. We're sharing together, really. <laughs> Consistently, awesome, amazing, well done. Lump them together in one day. You read all 10 in one day. Is that what you're saying? You read all 10 in one day. Uh, can you clarify? Who else has been reading? Only one person, only two people have read. Someone lumped it together, somebody read it consistently. In reading, I'm not committed my 10 chapters. Where have you stopped? Where are you on the journey? You read everything together in one day. Okay. While that is a good thing, it doesn't also help you to be consistent. For someone who's trying to be consistent in their Bible reading, even if all you do is one chapter a day, the consistency is what is is you're growing. You're growing your consistency in reading. So reading everything in one day doesn't really help you to be consistent because you cannot. Eat, you cannot eat one day for the week. <laughs> if you get what I mean. You cannot eat one day for the week. Right? Can you eat one day and say, I'm just going to re eat one day and then that will be it. I'll eat, I'll, I'll eat only on Fridays and that will be okay for the, for the remaining part of... Like the next week, I'll be good for reading. I'll just eat a very big meal on Fridays only and then I don't read. I don't eat the other days of the week. Can that work? Can that work? <laughs> All right. So the point of it is a consistency. You're trying to grow a consistent pattern of reading every day. That's the point of it. So reading everything together and does really doesn't really help you. To, yeah, I mean you're reading the Bible, but it's not. So you can do that for maybe maybe you won't take a retreat one day. You read chapter of the Bible, but that's not your everyday Bible reading. Your everyday Bible reading is that you're consistently reading every day, if possible. Put yourself on a on a schedule and say I'll read it at 10 a.m. or at 5 a.m. or whatever, so that it's it's just for the consistency. That's the point of reading it. Do you get what I mean? So yes, like we cannot eat one day of the week and say I've, I've eaten for the entire week. So it is that we cannot read our Bibles one day and say, well, I read it for the entire week. So yes, that's the point of that. So thank you for sharing everyone. So let's go into the book of Acts. So first of all, what do you think about the book of Acts, right? Who wrote the book of Acts? First of all, who wrote the book of Acts? Who's the author of the book of Acts? Anybody? Who knows? Who's the author? Right. Who's the author of the book of Acts? Who wrote the book of Acts? And who was it written for? Three questions. Who wrote the book of Acts? Paul wrote the book of Acts. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Who wrote the book of Acts? Who was it written for and what is the central theme of the book of Acts? 
Um, if you have been reading the book of Acts with us, um, yeah, chapter one, what's in there? Luke, thank you, Bezine, for clarifying that. Who was it written to? Who knows who the book was written to? Who was the book? Who was the book written to? The book of Acts. Luke was the same person that wrote the book of Luke, right? And then he just just continued. He's like he continued. Thank you for letting us know. Um, blessing. Yes, he wrote Theophilus. Absolutely. He, so he wrote, wrote the book of Acts. And the, the book of Luke, and then he's now in the book of Acts. And then he's just going to continue. He says in verse 1 of chapter 1, In my former book, Theophilus, talking about the book of, of the book of Luke, right? I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to, he up to heaven. So it tells us that Luke wrote this book as a continuation of the book of Luke for a man called Theophilus, right? Who obviously was, was somebody who mattered enough for Paul, for, for Luke to take time out and document the entire story of the book of Acts for this person to understand. Such a beautiful thing to do. You wrote the entire book for the purpose of one person. You don't mind. You don't mind doing all of the work for this one person. All right? So Luke was a disciple of Paul, um, you know, somehow, because he just... You know, he learned from him and all of that. So he had kind of like got first-hand information about everything. He documented the journey of Jesus Christ when he was on the earth. And after he was taken up again to heaven, he continued documenting that journey up until the end of the book of Acts. And that is so beautiful. Such a beautiful thing to do. So let's get into what's the central theme. The central theme of the book of Acts. What is the central theme of the book of Acts? Does anybody know? That's how we do book. That's how we do we read the Bible. We're not just reading the words alone. We need to understand the context, the setting of the book. When was it written? Where was it written? What was it, who was it written for? So that you can understand the reason why, when you're reading it, you can, you can get like the feel of why it was done, right? So, um, what is the central theme of the book of Acts? And as I'm speaking, please drop your lessons for me so far. What was your biggest lesson so far in chapters 1 to 10? Right. I want you to begin to drop them for me in the chats. Your biggest lesson. We're going to start from chapter 1. I want to go into, into all this chapter 10. Right. Central theme of the book of Acts is the confirmation story of the early church. Yes, that's the, that is it. The central theme of it is that Luke was writing to confirm what he already started talking about, about in the book of Luke. To say, I want to confirm the gospel. It's like saying the gospel happened. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John have happened. Jesus Christ has been taken up to heaven. So I want to confirm this gospel to you. That Jesus Christ was real. That's why these things can happen. That's why this book of the Acts of Apostles can happen. It says the Acts of the Apostles. The, what they did, their actions, the things that they did, that's what the book of Acts is all about. And I love the book of Acts. Coincidentally, or well, not coincidentally, as God will have it, um, I, my family did a study on the book of Acts um, just like earlier in the year. We finished earlier in the year. From, from chapter 1 to 28, one chapter a day for devotion, and it was so beautiful. I loved, I loved, loved, loved. So I'm doing it again, and I don't mind, right? I, I loved the, 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 the whole scenario around the book of Acts. It just shows you a lot of things, like what is possible as a Christian. Like, I, I'm like, oh my God, can we go back to these days? I want to see myself walking in light of this power that I see happening around me in the book of Acts. Like, this is what God desires for us. The power of the Holy Ghost coming on the people, and they just, you know, going out to do wonders for the Lord. That is what I want for myself. I love it. The things of the Holy Spirit was your, uh, was your highlight. Um, that's to see. Um, isn't it? it says, confirming God's word and spread of Christianity. That's it. I loved how the Holy Spirit dealt with them. Like all these mighty powers, the acts uh, that God did through them, the miracles and everything just blew my mind. And how their journey was showing them. The kinds of things that God expects of us, you know, bringing in the Gentiles into, into, into the fold, um, talking to the Jews, it was just all a beautiful, it's a beautiful, beautiful weave of, of that story. The deeds of the apostles and early disciples, absolutely. I'm just going to start off from, um, from, from what we're going to do from chapter 1. 
So chapter one, my own lesson. I'm just going to share my lessons with you. Please drop when I say chapter one, you just drop your lesson in the chat, okay? Chapter one was about Luke writing to the way Philosopher talked about that already. Um, and I love, it says, wait for the promise of the Father in verse eight. Luke, uh, Acts chapter one, verse eight. It says, wait for the promise of the Father. And it's talked about how the, the power of the Holy Ghost will come upon them and all of that. Wait. So even though God has given you a mandate, says make disciples of all nations and all of these things, he gave you a mandate, but wait. You can't do it on your own. You can't do it in your own power. What assignment has God given you? Are you in a waiting season right now? Where God is, wants to endure you with power for your assignment. Wait until the Holy Spirit comes upon you before you can get up and continue to do. All right? I love this. I'm loving this. this um, the, the comments. The lesson was the encounter that mere men had with the Holy Spirit and their lives were transformed drastically. I tell you, like, an ordinary man, an unschooled man, meets with God, and God just pew, transforms their lives. It is so powerful. Mm. I love what he says, that God has a deliberate plan for allowing Jesus to go to the cross. If you look at uh, Acts 123, it's not, it's not coincidence. It's not, it's, not a, it's not an accident. It was a deliberate thing. God sent Jesus Christ to go to the cross for a reason. Right, you must trust in your waiting season, no matter what. I mean, I have a lot of lessons I'm, that I learned from from here. Honestly, I have a lot of lessons. Um, chapter two now talks about the coming of the Holy Spirit, the power and authority that you need for your assignments, and that you need from Jesus is from Jesus Christ. The power you need. See what happened on the day of Pentecost, after the Holy Spirit had come upon them. Peter was able to boldly get up and preach. That was timid before. He was able to get up and preach. And 3,000 people were saved because the power of God had come upon him. That's what the power of God can do for you. How many of us are taking time out to cultivate an intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit? Constantly, you know, dwelling in his presence, constantly hearing from him, constantly being yielded to the power of the Holy Spirit. I feel like that's the book of Acts. It just shows us how, how not to do Christianity without God? How not to do Christianity without the Holy Spirit? Because the Holy Spirit is the power that we need to live our everyday life. To be able to carry out our divine assignment, to be able to pursue God's purpose for our lives, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. And that for me is beautiful. Blessing says, chapter 2, things predicted can come to pass. Hmm, let me see this. Things predicted can come to pass if you pray them out. Yep, absolutely. I cannot show up anyhow for my generation. It's an error. I need a deliberate relationship with the Holy Spirit. Profound words. You can't just show up anyhow. Like you have to allow the Holy Spirit to saturate you. You have to be constantly filled with the Holy Spirit, power of the Holy Spirit. Because without that, you're just playing. Hmm. You're just playing religion. You're not ready yet. So, chapter 3. Peter and John healed the crippled man. You know, and I was reading this, this scripture and I just realized that they were on the way to the temple. They were on the way to the, to, to the temple when they met the, this man that was crippled. Sometimes on the, on the journey where we think we are going, on journey of our divine assignments and all those things, we think that these other things that, that we find on our way are our distractions. We forget that sometimes they are the main assignments. Those things that you see and say, this one's, this one's distracting me. Why is this person disturbing me? Don't you know, don't they know I'm busy? <laughs> that is your assignment. Those people are your assignment. See what happened when, when, if you look at that chapter 3, when they healed this man, see what happened. See the number of people that were added to the church because of, the, of what happened to this man. It says in verses um, 9 to 10 that they saw him, chapter 3, 9 to 10, it says they saw him and they recognized him as the one who had been sitting there before. The Bible says that they were filled with wonder and amazement. And all the people were astonished and they came running to them. That became an opportunity to be able to do more. So don't see those things along your way as distractions. No, they're all part of God's plan for you. It's all part of God's purpose. Don't be so fixated on where you're going that you actually miss what you was along the way. Be careful not to mistake what you see along your way for distraction. Be careful, be careful, because what happens is that a lot of us think that, um, you know, all the other things that we see around us are distracting us from our greater purpose. 
Sometimes that is what God actually put there for you. I love what Isaiah says. God can always interrupt me in my journey. It's about God, not me. Exactly. It's his journey. We have to follow him. You have to play by the ear. You have to make sure that you are listening to his voice, leading you, telling you go this way. Don't go that way. This is how you do it. This is how to, to act. This is how to behave. It is up to you to behave yourself in a way that, um, you know, allows God room in your life at any point in time. You cannot be rigid in your, in your walk with God. Chapter 3. Chapter 4. They arrested Peter and John. They were arrested because they were sharing the gospel and because they were having great impacts on the people. Chapter 4. Right? The Bible says in verse 4, chapter 4, that many who heard the message believed and the number of believers grew to 5,000. So even the arrests of Peter and John did not stop the gospel from moving, moving ahead. At their own detriment, right? At their own detriment, they still continue to choose to keep going, preaching the gospel. And they were warned not to preach the gospel again. Did they care? No. They didn't care. They still kept doing it. And the Bible says that more people were being added to the church daily as they kept declaring God's word. From um, Somebody says, through faith in the name of Jesus Christ, we can obtain anything. Absolutely. So whatever challenge we find on our way on this journey of purpose, we must remember that God's path is never always convenient. But it's up to us to say, no matter the inconvenience I suffer, no matter what I find happening, no matter what I see happening, I will continue to choose to follow God. I will continue to choose to do his will. I will continue to choose to follow him even when it is uncomfortable for me. The Bible says that they were brought before the council. Peter, that's Peter and John now. Again, and this became an opportunity for sharing the message. When they got before the council, they didn't say, ah, this one's have the power to arrest us and kill us or whatever. They still continued to share. They didn't say, oh, well, now we're here. We're afraid. No. They still continue to seize as every opportunity they had to share. And imagine the caliber of people that were in the council. They heard. They heard. And the Bible says that in verse 13, that they saw the courage of Peter and they realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men. Then they were astonished and took note that they had been with Jesus. They were like, ah, I don't understand. How are these people so amazing? How are they able to do all this that they are doing? They were on school, ordinary men. But see where they were. They were able to do the will of God. Even though they were on school, ordinary men. People saw them. And they were like, oh my goodness. These people are ordinary people like us. And what God is showing us is, no matter who you are, no matter what you, what you know, what you think you don't know, God is saying to you today, I can do it. I can make you an ordinary woman into who I want you to be. Just stay with me. Just follow me. Just, just take on my power. Stay with me in intimate, in intimate fellowship. Watch what I can do with your life. That's God. And that's what he's saying to you today. So stop, so stop saying, I, I, I can't do anything. I'm shy. I'm not bold. I don't have courage. I don't. God can take you. You just spend time with the Holy Spirit. He can transform you into a bold, courageous person. Moving mountains and shaking mountains. That's what God can do with you. Just stay with him. Ordinary, unschooled men. And they were astonished. I love something I says in verse 23. After they had been arrested and everything and all of that, it says that they went back to their own people. And that really struck me. After they had, you know, they had gone before the council and all of that, all of that, they still came back to their own people. And the Bible says that they prayed with their own people. Who are your own people? Who's in your tribe? Who's in your community? Who are your friends? What kind of people, who, who, do you, who can you fall back on? Like, who can pray with you? Do you have those kinds of friends or those kinds of company or relationships or people around you who are in your company? Who's in your tribe? Who's in your community? That you can go back to and say, um, you know, let's pray together. Let's pray together. And the Bible says in verse 31 that they got renewed when they had spent time together. They got renewed. Their energy was renewed. You know, who's in your tribe? Who, who, who is renewing your energy? Who are you staying with? Verse 32 says that unity came about because they all... Let me, let me read it to you. Let me read that chapter to you. Like that verse to you, rather. Acts 4, 31 and 32. It says, After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken. Another shaking happened because they gathered together. 
you know. Hmm. And all of that. I love what Isine is saying here. Overhaul the tribe if possible. Absolutely. And he says, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God boldly. They got more courage, more boldness because they kept staying with the right tribe. They put themselves in the space of the right people around them. And verse 32 says, all the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything that they had. They were together. They had their own tribe, their own community. They were together in oneness of mind. And they were all bound together by God's purpose for their lives. So important. Who's in your tribe? I love what we have here going, the Mothers Arising community. So you're, you're, you're blessed to be in this tribe, or okay? We also have our VIP Moms Club, where, you know, where we, we take time out to help our mothers grow in every area of their lives. And by saying we, you can grow, we got you. You have all those people around you. What are you doing with the company you have? Are you drawing on the energy of the company you have? Or are you in the wrong company? Maybe you need to change your tribe. Maybe you need to do an overhaul of your tribe, like Isina is saying here. Who is in your tribe? Hmm. Chapter 5, the popular story of Ananias and Sapphira, right? The Bible says that, the, that, that, that this happened, you know, uh, they lied to the Holy Spirit, they died, and all of that. And the fear of, 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 the, of, of the apostles was all, all the people around them, they were afraid of, oh, these ones, they are, it's another level. They were afraid of them because they saw what could happen, what God can do. Through these people. And verse 12 says, The apostles performed many signs and wonders among the people, and they were highly regarded, and more and more men and women believed in the Lord. Verse 12 of Acts chapter 5. As they started to, to do more and more signs and wonders, people started to say, Wow, who is your God? Can I go with him? So, God, you are a wonder to your generation. You are a wonder to your generation. Chapter 13, Acts 5, 13, the power of God did not, so displayed did not allow everybody to come in. No one dared to join them. Absolutely. That's it. Like, you are afraid, like, oh, this power of God will help you to sift those who need to be in your tribe and those who need to remain on the outer, on the outer level. Yes, they will, all be, they will all be believers. They will all be in your community. It may be possible. But the ones that are in your tribe, in your own very special corner, the power of the Holy Spirit are upon you we help you to sift and discern who should come closer and who should not. Verse 15 says that the, the shadow of Peter was healing the sick. Oh my God. The shadow of Peter was healing the sick. And that comes from a place of intimacy with the Holy Spirit himself. And verse 17 says that when the council saw that they were doing great things again, they got jealous. I don't know why we think that when God sends us on errands, that it's going to be smooth all the way. People can get jealous of you. People can envy you. They can envy the purpose of God for your life. They will not know why you are like that. They can envy you, all right? So don't think that you are in, immune to envy and jealousy and all those bad feelings from other people when you are doing the will of God. It can come, right? It can come. Mm. It can come. And see what happened in verse 19 of Acts chapter 5. The Bible says, in verse 19, the Bible says that, but during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail and brought them out. See, okay, nothing can hinder you in God's will. What God wants to do, the will of God will always be established. What he wants to do will always happen. All right? And even after that, the street told the men, when they were brought before the council, they said, see, we cannot obey men. We have to obey God. It doesn't matter what you think. Even if you put us in jail, our God is able to rescue us. We cannot be afraid of you. We are rather afraid of the one that sent us on an errand. And that's what I always say. Who are you afraid of? The people you are going to deliver the message to or the person that sent you. Who are you afraid of? The God who sent you, who is able to kill, kill both soul and body. <laughs> is he the one that you are afraid of? Or you are afraid of only the person that can kill only the body? Humans. We can't do that. Chapter 6. Hmm. I love chapter 6. When the people were getting more and more and they had to, you know, appoint deacons and all of that. God gave them the idea of what to do, right? They started to appoint deacons and they divided the work up in a way that would make it easy for them to be able to continue doing the work of the Father. Whatever business that God has put in your mind, your career, your work as, you know, in your business, in your work as a mom, as a wife, 
every area of your life, God actually has a strategy for you. He has a purpose and a plan, a blueprint that he can give to you, that you can run with to run everything you run. Imagine what we do here, Mothers Are Rising. We have four, I mean, personally, I, 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 I find it such a privilege to be able to be leading four teams, four, team, four teams, um, four different organizations across, and just, I was just doing a bit of, um, you know, review. We have four teams here of 29 team leaders in their own respective areas, 29 team leaders, four teams, and we actually, all of us are in five different continents of the world in eight countries. Eight countries, five continents, 29 people on our team of, leader, of leaders across four organizations. And we're here. I'm, we're all living in different countries. But God has given us that strategy to be able to carry out everything and do it seamlessly. That, that's something that God can give you. He can give you a blueprint and say, work with this blueprint. We'll do it this way. Run with it this way. So there's nothing that God gives you that he doesn't give you an, a, a blueprint for executing it. It's what we do in Mom University. You know, we talk about clarity. What's my purpose? How can I execute on my purpose? What can I do? It's, part, it's what God helps you. God hands you a blueprint and says, this is a blueprint for your assignment. Run with it. What are you confused about? About your assignment, about, your, about God's divine purpose for your life. What are you confused about? God can give you the answer to your confusion. And in this same chapter, Stephen was arrested for preaching. And in chapter 7, we saw that he eventually died. He died for preaching the gospel of Jesus. Right? And I love something about Stephen so much in chapter 7. Stephen defended himself. Like, what he believed in. He was able to do a... I mean, I loved how he did it. Started from the beginning, Genesis, and ended at the present day. He gave a, a, an account. I'm like, how many of us can do that? Like, you know everything so much about God, who you are following, how God is to you and everything. And you're able to give somebody a testimony from the beginning of, what God, of who God is to you. Profound stuff. Profound stuff. He gave an account, a disordered account. And was able to win some people over from that act that he did. Okay, um, verse 2, Acts chapter 2, verse 2 says, and 2 and 3, they knew their place and didn't shift ground to other duties. Even people serving tables needed to be anointed to serve. Exactly, <laughs> you know, anointed men to serve tables. Anything your, your God has given to you to do, you need God's power to do it. It doesn't matter. You may think, oh, it's just it's trivial. It's just nothing trivial when it comes to God. Everything is important. You must do it anointed. You must do it full of God's power. And you must know your place and not feel uncomfortable. When somebody else is doing this other one, be like, ah, I like that one, it's more glamorous. But God says, no, this is what I, wanna, what I want you to do. You must know your place and stick to it. No competition, no jostling, no. For a position, no. We know our place and we stay there. That's God's plan and purpose for our lives. All right? Acts chapter 8. Hmm. It says, serious persecution arose against the church in verse 1. That was the story of Saul's, Saul's conversion. Right, if you remember it, that's how Saul got converted. A miraculous conversion, a conversion of Saul. And this same Saul that was persecuting the church, God arrested him. There's nobody that you should say, Oh, that one is a lost cause. Nobody, nobody like that. Nobody's a lost cause. Nobody's a lost cause. God is able to lead you into what He wants you to have. All right, and He says, <clears throat> These parts. I say that those, those who have been scattered preach the word wherever they went. That thing that you think is a persecution for you may be God's way of moving you into an, a new season of your assignment to reach more people, to reach another set of people with your divine assignment. All right? That's it. I love this story of Simon the sorcerer. The Bible says that he gave his life to Jesus. He became a believer. He got baptized. But even at that, his heart was not right before God. It's possible for you to be a child of God for years and have the right heart, the right attitude, the right motivations. It's why I always pray over my heart every time. I say, Lord, help me. Deal with my heart. Is there anything within me? Is there anything within me that is pre pre preventing me from, you know, from, that, that, is, that is making my heart not to be right before you? That is preventing me from stepping into the fullness of what I have for me. Lord, deal with my heart. Any motives, 
any motivations, any desires that are not of you, anything in me at all that does not align with the will of God for my life. Lord, take them away from me. It's such an important prayer to always pray over your heart. Because see, Simon is also God baptized, but he was still asking to buy the Holy Spirit so he can use it for himself. Right? That's a motivation right there. And another lesson says, Stephen educated the crowd about the history of faith. Many of the young children don't know what we've about them. Mm. Um, if you can explain that a little bit more. Do you mean young generation in terms of younger people? Younger human beings or people that are coming after don't know a lot of things. What do you mean young, young generation? What do you mean young generation? Um, of the people in the Bible or in our present generation. I'm just curious about your thoughts about that. All right. Um, our generation right now or in the Bible. All right. Um, mm. the, further down into that chapter, I talked about the Ethiopian eunuch who was an important official. And the Bible says that in verse 29, the Bible says that the Spirit of God told Philip to go and stay near the chariots. I mean, Philip was going somewhere else. He was on his way somewhere. And God said, go and... Young people in our generation... Okay, I get you. But So I, want, I wanted to know where you were coming from because I wanted to say something about that. But I just wanted to get your, your understanding. So not only young people that don't, know, that don't know the Word of God. It's not even about the age. It's about the fact that you are not even willing... To study God's word. How many of us even know what's in our Bibles? Do we even read it? Let's even forget the young ones that are just coming up, right? So many of them need help in that area, but even us, a lot of us don't even know what is written about us in the Bible. We don't even know what, God, what God's word says about some area of our lives. How do we teach the younger generation? How do we even teach our own children what we don't know? Right? So let's start with us and fortify ourselves in God's word. Let's make it a habit. How can you say you, you're following someone you don't even know them, right? So let's, let's make it a habit. Because how do we impart knowledge to the next generation if we don't have that same knowledge within us? A lot of us don't even know what the Bible says. We don't even read our Bibles. We don't even understand what, God, what, what God's word says about us, about our destiny, about his purpose for our lives, about his, the way he deals. We don't even know. So how do we pass on that same knowledge or that same information or that same transformation power? To those that are coming after us. How do we? How do we do that? The Bible even says that we should teach it to our children. Bind it upon, their, upon our necks. Do this one. Do that one. Teach it when you're, when, you're on, when, you, when you're on the way. Teach it when you're sitting down. When you're at home. When you're out and about. Teach it. But how do we teach people we don't know? It's why we're doing this today together, right? So that we can also study the Bible together. Learn together and grow together. Right? Hmm. I love this Philip story, it, and it gave me a lot of lessons right there. First of all, Philip was told to go and stand near the chariot. Um, he went out of his way to stand near the chariot. He got into the chariot, explained the Bible to this man, to this eunuch, and when he was done, the Bible says that the Spirit of God took Philip immediately away to another assignment. Some of us will preach to the eunuch and make the eunuch our next target. We'll just build a camp around the eunuch and turn it into a ministry and start to talk to political Official, say this man is in politics. God wants to call him into the politics, and I'm going to be ministering to the politicians. No, after he was done with that assignment, he got up immediately. But, but he doesn't even know whether he wanted to. The Spirit of God took him away to another city immediately. We must know our roles in the lives of people. You must know the, the scope of your role in their lives. Once it's over, it's over, and you move to the next assignment. Right? You, you must know when it's over. You must know why you are here. When you are done, the assignment is over. Don't build a tent around what God just says, preach and go. Don't build a ministry around that little thing, that, that single assignment, that single instruction. Don't build a ministry around it. Move to the next assignment. All right. God can give us a right leading if we listen. Absolutely. Mm. Philip had moved on to, the, to another assignment. Why am I in people's lives? What does God want me to do with them? What does God want me to do in this season with this person? And when it's done, it's done. Don't turn it into something else. All right? Chapter 9 now. Paul met the Lord in the most unusual situation, actually. Ananias obeyed God. Haha. <laughs> Even when there was a possibility of harm. Ananias said, God, I should go and meet Paul. Me. This Paul that is, that is killing people. <laughs> Please don't say me that I'm not going. 
but God explains, you know, got a revelation and God explains to him why he needed to go and all of that, you know, and it was a profound moment for him. And he, he was the one that preached. Imagine the, the, the kind of ranking of the star that we have in heaven for preaching to Paul that became the apostle. Gosh, what a privilege. What a privilege. What a privilege. And then Saul spent time with the disciples and then he began to preach. I love that part. He does not start to preach immediately. He spent time with them and he began to preach. Meaning he learned, what do you think he was doing when he was spending time with them? They were not just gisting. They were teaching him the way of the Lord. He was learning. He was being groomed. He was being discipled. So that when he, when he would be released, he could go on and then preach. But he was first of all spending time with them, learning, with, learning from them and growing. And then the Bible says that people were surprised by Paul. But he kept baffling them. They were like, ah, this man. How is he even now turned around? How is he changed? That's why you can't get upset when people, people that knew you before are, are still trying to check you. Like, ah, is he the same person? Hey, she has changed. Wow. Is that her? Don't be surprised when they don't believe you immediately. You have to prove to them, first of all, that you are truly the real deal. Right? Even the disciples of Jerusalem were afraid of, of Paul. When he came to them or so, when he came back to them, he said, eh, we can't take you in, I'm sorry. It took Barnabas had to bring Paul and hand over and say, don't worry, this is his testimony. This is what happened to him. So everybody needs someone. You need someone to guide you, a teacher, a mentor in your season, even as a believer, someone who's discipling you, who is helping you grow in your spirituality, who's helping you grow in every area of your life. We always need people. Barnabas took Paul and handed him over and said, don't worry, he's a good person. Sometimes you need that kind of person in your life who will be there watching out for you, leading you, holding you by the hand. We all need people like that, like Barnabas in our lives. In your assignment, you need others to lead you and bring you in. Who's leading you? Who's teaching you? Who's holding your hand? Who is your Barnabas in your season of life? Something you have to remember. Who is my Barnabas? Who's leading me right now? Then chapter 10. Hmm. Talks about Cornelius, a centurion. His family was devout and God fearing. They had a heart for God and he saved them. That blew my mind. Like they were not even, they were just Gentiles, but they had a heart of, for God, even as Gentiles. Even as Gentiles. And God saved them. God saved them. Be careful that you don't miss out on who God is sending you to or your divine assignment because you are busy judging the people. And there you are saying, oh, I see this one, they are, they are rich. They don't need God. Or they look like they are fine. Now, why, why do they need God? Be careful that you don't have, that you don't do um, spiritual profiling of people. Be careful. Funny thing was that I'm, I'm doing, a, I'm currently doing a study, um, the Lent, a Lent study on um, first days of decrease. And one of the things that we learned in last, I think it was yesterday's study. Yesterday, yeah, two days ago now. We're talking about spiritual profiling of people. You can look at somebody and assume that they are, they are, that's when they're Christian. All do I want to say to her? Ah, she's been born again since before I was even born. I can't say anything to her. And you don't remember that God sent you to them. There's a reason why he sent you to them. We profile them and say, this one doesn't need Jesus. This one needs Jesus. This one needs this. This one doesn't need that. We can't do that. We cannot do that. We must take people that God sends us to the way, discern people. Don't profile people based on what you think. This one is poor. They can't, they can't come to my church. Or this one is rich. They don't need Jesus. Or this one is having everything going together. So what? No, no, no. I can't talk to them. You cannot do that. Peter was going to do the same thing. I said, ah. They are, uh, this thing is unclean. I said, don't call unclean what I have called clean. And that was how the Gentiles came into the fold. God is called to everyone. Don't profile people based on your own understanding. The Bible says we know no man after the flesh. Don't profile people based on what you think they should be doing. Don't profile them based on what you think that, um, you know, they look like. No, you cannot do that. You can't do that. You must allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. Discern people after the Spirit of God. Don't discern people at the way they look from the outside. Let the Holy Spirit be your guide when you are discerning people. The Bible says in Acts 10, 44, that the people were astonished <laughs> when they saw that even the Gentiles started to, um, you know, to, to, to receive the Holy Spirit. In the, from verse 44 to 46, says they were surprised that the, even the Gentiles had received the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came on all who had heard the message. 
and the circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. And then they got baptized. Don't profile people. Don't profile people. Let the Holy Spirit himself be the one to lead you. Don't miss out on what God is doing. Be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and how he's leading you. You can say, ah, this person looks like they have it all together. Why do I need to talk to them? Ah, I don't know. I don't think so. Hmm. Let the Holy Spirit be the one to lead you in all that you do. All right. That is it all um, for review. From my end, someone says, the Lord introduced himself to, to Saul. For those who are stubborn to the gospel, we can pray that the Lord will introduce himself to them. Exactly. When they have an encounter with the Lord, they cannot doubt the encounter. Nobody needs to preach to them. This one, they know that it's God himself that came to introduce himself to them. That's it. We just keep praying over them. We keep praying over them. All right? So that's it, um, ladies. From my end, that's what I have learned. And I hope that we continue reading this um, so that this time next Friday also, we will do uh, another review of chapters 11 to 20. If you have not been reading, you can still catch up. You can still do your own. Um, and just keep reading, keep following with us. If not, if you fall off somewhere, come back and just, just come, pick yourself back up and keep reading. Don't let the enemy condemn you and say, oh, see all your mates, they've been doing these things since. See, where are you? Where are you? It doesn't matter. Just continue from where you stopped. Don't let the enemy hold you down with condemnation. No. Get up and keep going. Get up, pick yourself back up and grow yourself. Grow consistency. Grow a committed lifestyle of reading your Bible, of praying, of meditation, of growing in the spirit. Let that be who you are. Make a commitment to know Jesus even more for yourself. All right, Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, mighty God, for all that we've learned today. Thank you, awesome Father, for helping us to dig deeper into your word. We ask Holy Spirit that even as we have learned, uh, we keep reading your, your, the Bible, keep studying your word, that you continue to reveal yourself to us in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask, oh God, that the strength and the grace to keep going to not fall off, and even when we fall off, to come back. We receive that grace and that strength. We're empowered in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Before I go, does anybody have any questions about um, what we've read so far from 1 to 10 of the book of Acts? Do you have any questions that you'd like to ask before we get put this, take this to a close? Any questions? Any questions you have? Before we gotta go, 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 go. Any questions? If you have any questions, please drop them in the chat and then we can take them before I gotta go, 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 go. It was good to see everyone. Thank you for joining in today's session. It was beautiful to see everyone joining today. You find fascinating when time is recorded. Well, okay, when time is recorded in scripture, is that what you mean? Sorry about that. When time is recorded, is that what you mean? Like when the when scripture records time, or what do you mean by when time is recorded? Recorded where in the Bible? Yes, okay, yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. It tells you that that is important. God wanted you to see the time so you can understand the context, you know, of how that thing happened, when it was. You say at midday, at noon, you know, in the third hour of prayer, so you can have an idea of <laughs> of the context of the setting of of the story. I love it too. Just gives us this Bible is such an interesting um you know tool. I just read Bible and like ah, so fascinating, so many things to learn. I'm always constantly learning something. No matter how much I've read the same thing over and over. Like I'm doing that, like I told you, I'm doing the book of Acts again this year, a second time, but I'm still I'm still seeing things that I didn't see the first time that we did the did the thing together, right? So yeah, some was something. But so we don't have any questions. Um assuming that everybody's fine. And we'll see you again next week, Friday, at the same exact time, which is 7 p.m. West African time. 11 a.m. Mountain Time, um, 12 noon Central Time, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. And for those that are in UK, that will be 6 p.m. for them and all of that. All right, everyone. Thank you for joining us and be, being a part of today's study. 
We'll see you again next week. God bless you. Take care. Bye, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.